The Indiana Hoosiers may have lost Khalil Ware to the NBA, but they may have just found his replacement in Aaron Bradshaw. Now it's time to go get the Kentucky transfer. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in. It is the Lockdown Hoosiers podcast. I'm your man, Jacob Goins. I appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day. We are a part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, which is your team every day. Want to start out by saying thank you all so much for uh, the love on audio and on the video version of the show. We just passed 2,100 subscribers. It felt like yesterday we were just at 2,000. So you guys continue to come back, continue to show the support and continue to crush it. So thank you so much uh, for doing that. Shout out to the everydayers. Those are you that come back each and every day. Make this your first listen every day. So thank you so much. If you're on YouTube and have not done that yet, hit subscribe, hit the like button. Helps us grow tremendously. So thank you so much. And if you're on the audio, you can subscribe there and turn on notifications as well. Indiana lost Khalil Ware, their seven-foot big man, to the NBA draft, something we all expected was going to happen. But we may have just found his future replacement on this team and possibly a a guy that could go to the NBA as well. And it's the Kentucky transfer, Aaron Bradshaw. We'll talk about him today and why the Hoosiers have to go get this guy. It is crucial that we go get Aaron Bradshaw in the transfer portal. We'll talk about that. Plus, The reason he's in the portal, the biggest news in college basketball that is yet to be finalized is John Calipari supposedly, reportedly trying to get a deal done at Arkansas. What a crazy story that is. We'll talk about how that impacts us here in Bloomington. And plus, UConn is your national champion. We'll talk about that with the regular season and the postseason. The whole basketball season is now completed. It's officially the offseason. We'll have that for you in the final segment as well. Indiana is reportedly in contact with Kentucky transfer Aaron Bradshaw. He is seven foot one coming out of his freshman year. Now, his stats are not going to blow you away by any means, but you have to remember he was a young, raw freshman who was hurt at the start, and so his debut was a little delayed, and it was a little bit on a shakier side, a shakier start for Aaron Bradshaw. And so, yeah, his five points a game, three rebounds a game, no, not really going to, you know, it's not going to impress you a whole lot from the Camden, New Jersey native, but this guy can play. He was a top 10 prospect out of high school in 2023. He was the number one center in the country coming out of high school. You're telling me you wouldn't take that right now? You're telling me you don't want that on this roster right now? I'll say this. I think a lot of other fan bases are saying that, and I think a lot of other coaching staffs are saying that right now because this thing is just getting started. This is fresh news within the last day. And Indiana will not be the only ones in on this young man. I can promise you that. But if you go back and start watching some things about Aaron Bradshaw, he really could be the next replacement for Khalil Ware. He he um, he um he sees the basketball really well coming off the rim. He seeks the basketball coming off the rim. He goes and gets rebounds. And again, he only had three rebounds per game on average, but his role was sort of slimmed down near the end of the season, uh, just being a freshman, not developing as much as they were hoping he would and those sorts of things. But this guy's just got raw ability, man. He is a really, really talented player. And with Kentucky shooting the ball as much as they did, he had every opportunity to go after the basketball. And he absolutely did. He goes after it, put back dunk. He's really controlled under the basket. When he gets the ball, whether it be off the rim or off a pass, when he's under the basket and the defense collapses, he's really composed with the ball in his hands and uses pump fakes and uses power dribbles and gets himself back in position and then he's seven foot one. So all he's got to do is drop it in the basket, basically. And he does a really nice job of that. The two things that really stood out to me, other than that about Aaron Bradshaw, watching him this season and then going back and watching some film for this episode, 
He can shoot the three. Has it didn't do it much. Did not do it much, but he did it just enough to be a threat. You remember us talking about this with Khalil Ware. We didn't want Ware stepping out and shooting five or six a game, and we didn't expect him to make three or four. I said go one for three. Go one for three every game. And if you do that, defenses have to respect it. They have to make a choice whether they are going to step out on you and defend the big man and threaten him going around you if they develop that game where they can put it on the floor or them passing it or whatever and had maybe having somebody on a back door cut open in the lane or they step off and say, you know what, we're going to give you that shot and we're going to hope to God you just don't make it. And then you hope that we make it and we make them pay and you take advantage of it. If Bradshaw can develop that even more and become a legitimate seven-foot shooting big man, Oh my God, he would be unbelievable. And I think he can be that. I think he could be that here in Bloomington, wherever he goes in college, if he doesn't decide to come here. And that's what makes a good NBA center. That's why I think he could be Khalil Ware's replacement. I really do. He could be the replacement here. And also he could be the next Khalil Ware to get shipped off to the NBA after being in Bloomington. I just think that could really happen for him here. The other thing I like about him is he runs the floor extremely well. Some things that were concerns were physicality and some of his effort and energy at times, but I think the guy just needs to play. I just don't think he played enough basketball at this level to really showcase what he's got. And look, in high school, he was just dominating people. He didn't have to run the floor full speed and and go physical for 40 minutes. He's going to have to do that at this level. But I think if he does that, he has shown that in his limited minutes, man, he is a really good player. And he sprints the floor. He looks like a deer running down the floor. And he's seven foot one. Just give him the ball. Give him the ball and get out of the way. His pick and roll was fantastic. I think that could really work well with the guard that we have now with Trey Galloway. We proved that with him and Khalil Ware. And then if you bring in any more guards through the portal, which, shoot, we're trying. Aaron Bradshaw could be the answer. And if you're Indiana and Mike Woodson, go get this guy. I don't care. He's a Kentucky transfer, played power six basketball, top 10 player coming out of his class. He was the number one center in the country. You go and get this guy. He is a difference maker, a game changer. You cannot tell me he won't make that freshman to sophomore jump. He's going to do it. The Hoosiers have to go get him. He would elevate this roster tremendously if you went and got the seven foot one Kentucky transfer, Aaron Bradshaw. Well, coming up on Locked on Hoosier, speaking of Kentucky and the reason we're talking about Aaron Bradshaw, the biggest news of the offseason and really of the basketball season are the reports of John Calipari going to Arkansas. We'll talk about what that means and how that impacts us here in Bloomington because. It already is. We'll talk about that coming up in just a second on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers is brought to you by FanDuel. Look, it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. I'm very excited about that, by the way. Baseball's now in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bucks win or lose. Yes, that's right. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs and slam dunks, all on the app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Welcome back into Locked On Hoosiers. Appreciate you being here, making this your first listen each and every day. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. Also, turn on notifications if you're on audio, where we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. How about the bomb that was dropped on Sunday night? I mean, what a massive piece of news to just sort of start getting leaked out through message boards and, and through some different sources, and then all of a sudden, Some local journalists in Fayetteville started picking it up. Then some journalists in Lexington started picking it up. Then some national media started picking it up, like 247 and on three. And then all of a sudden, bam, 
There's ESPN. There's Sham Sharania. There's Woj. There's everybody jumping on this news that John Calipari is trying to finalize a five-year deal to leave Kentucky and go to Arkansas to be the next head coach of the Razorbacks. Unbelievable. It's wild. And I know that he's not the Indiana coach and he's not going to Indiana. He's leaving an SEC school to go to another SEC school. But it is crazy to see the legend of 15 years who has worn the blue and white for a long, long time leave and wear red, Arkansas red and white, and go to Fayetteville after Eric Musselman left for USC. After their coach, there's a whole cycle there. Go read about that. It's pretty wild. So that's crazy news. Unbelievable. And, of course, our instant thought and reaction is, okay, who's going to enter the portal? Who can we go after for Indiana? Who can Mike Woodson and this staff go get? Well, we already talked about Aaron Bradshaw, right? I think some of his players will follow, but I, I don't know. We've never seen this in this era with a coach like John Calipari. And I think some of his guys will follow him to Fayetteville, sure. But what's the way of John Calipari? He's just going to go and recruit a ton of high school guys. Like, that's just what he does. He's going to go get the best high school players in the country, bring them in, and put them in the NBA. Question is, can he win? I don't think so, but maybe he needs a fresh start. The numbers they're talking about that he's going to have NIL-wise at Arkansas, I'm hearing near to $5 million a year for NIL in Fayetteville. That's absurd. But that's what you got to do to win. So we'll see if that all does come to fruition and see if that ends up happening. Then another big question, probably the biggest question is, who in the world is Kentucky going to hire? Who in the world? I mean, they can hire anybody. It's the biggest job that's been open in years. I mean, that is the, that's the biggest job open right now, and it's a top five job in the country. Let's just be honest. It's Kentucky, right? Who in the world are they going to go after? People are saying Dan Hurley from UConn, he just won back-to-back national titles. He's not going anywhere. People are saying Nate Oates from Alabama, Bruce Pearl from Auburn. Some are trying to go and get Billy Donovan. Some are saying, I mean, uh, um, Jay Wright, uh, the former Villanova coach who's now on TV. I mean, it's crazy the names that are be throwing around. But how does this impact Indiana? How does this impact us? Well, I think you got to go and just pounce like everybody else is, like we're trying to do with Aaron Bradshaw and with anybody else that decides to enter the portal over the next few days and few weeks. It's the dead period right now, but it's coming up very soon. I think that you have to go and just be a part of it. Join the party because we will not be the only ones. Every school in the country is going to reach out to Kentucky transfers and say, hey, why don't you come here? We'll actually win you some games. We're going to make a run in the NCAA tournament, something that Kentucky just hasn't done in a few years. And the problem is those guys were wanting to get developed and go to the NBA. And nobody was doing that like John Calipari at Kentucky. And so you have to be able to promise them that. Can Indiana promise them that? I don't know. I think you can on a certain level. We've sent multiple guys to the NBA in recent years under Mike Woodson, but look at it from a true guard perspective. I think there's a little bit of concern there. If you're a center like an Aaron Bradshaw, I think you feel pretty good. We just put somebody just like you going to the NBA draft. Boom. There you go. You should feel pretty good about that. You're looking at small forwards and power forwards. We've got guys playing right now, having career nights every single night out in Golden State, right, with Trace Jackson Davis, who went to the NBA and is playing great. So you have those guys that you can show and say, here's what we've done recently, here's what we can do for you. And then, no matter who the coach is that gets hired at Kentucky, they're going to get a slam dunk hire. It's going to be a big name. This will not be, let me clarify this right now, this is not going to be a situation where Kentucky hires some dude that nobody knows who it is. He comes in, can't recruit, can't win, struggles out the gate, and we jump on it and just take advantage and take over the state of Kentucky. No, that's not how this is going to work by any means. That's not going to happen for us in Bloomington. It's not going to happen for those folks in Louisville. It's not going to happen for anybody at Tennessee and Rick Barnes. Like, Nothing is going to happen around Lexington, and that state will still belong to the blue and white. 
but I think you can do it early. I think you can jump on that a little bit early until whoever the new coach is comes in and gets kind of settled in and starts recruiting and ultimately starts winning. But this will not be, oh, let's go in to Kentucky and just take everybody because they've got a new coach. They can't recruit. I don't think so. But I think you can do that early on. Go in there to what has seemed to be a almost a, a there's a, almost a boundary where you just can't go in there because any any guy that's good is considering Kentucky. Go in there right now. Go right now and say, hey, there's a lot of uncertainty there at Kentucky. Louisville's a dumpster fire. Why don't you just take a little short drive to Bloomington and really come home and play for a top five program in college basketball history? Why don't you want to come and do that? Because look at what we're building here. This past year wasn't great. We're bringing in guys to the portal. We've got a really good high school player coming through. We would love for you to be a part of it in the future because our high school recruiting is terrible. we got to go get some guys. And why not try to jump into the state of Kentucky if you're able to? Why not go down there where there is still some uncertainty and take advantage early? Other states are going to do it. Ohio's going to do it. Tennessee's going to do it. The Carolinas are going to do it. Pennsylvania's going to do it. You may as well be a part of it, and you may as well jump in there and see what you got and see where you can make a little traction and jump on it and take advantage before a massive head coach steps into Lexington and just starts wiping that state clean once again. Crazy, crazy news about John Calipari. If this all does come final, and and you may be watching this and it may have already gone final, what a wild change. And you know what? Good for him. I know we don't really like him, and most people don't. I don't really, but good for him. I mean, that that was so far past due for him to get out, Kentucky to move on. The fans were ready. We've talked to our good buddy Lance Dahl of Locked On Kentucky a couple of times. Like, it was just time for him to go. And now he's going to be a refreshed, revitalized, re-energized, refocused coach in Fayetteville. They're giving him everything he could possibly want to win. And Kentucky doesn't have to pay a 30-something million dollar buyout if they were to fire him. They can use all that money and they can go hire a massive, massive coach. We'll keep an eye on that here on the show because that's huge news, man. That's that's legit college basketball news with John Calipari going to Arkansas and Kentucky trying to find their new head coach. But us here in Indiana have to take advantage of Kentucky and the whole state being vulnerable right now. Well, coming up in our final segment on Lockdown Hoosiers, the UConn Huskies are national champions. The offseason is officially here. We'll kind of recap and, and put a bow on the 2023-2024 season and what to expect moving forward in the next year. We'll have that coming up in our final segment on Lockdown Hoosiers. Final segment here on the show. Appreciate you being here, making this your go-to spot for all things Indiana athletics. If you're an everydayer, thank you so much. If you're not, Put this in your rotation. Be Make this the first thing you listen to each and every day. In the bathroom, in the shower, in the car, in the kitchen, in the office. I don't care where you listen. Just put us on and get up to date on everything going on around Indiana athletics. Well, as a lot of us expected, the UConn Huskies are national champions. They uh, take down Purdue. Right? We love that. Taking down Purdue 75 to 60 and Look, this UConn team and really this UConn program is something that us here in Indiana can really, really appreciate. And it's something that coaches across the country, yes, including you, Mike Woodson, should really try to replicate. Who cares? It's a copycat league. Dan Hurley has done amazing things at UConn, and it has not just been him. This has been a dominant run for the Huskies. The last 26 years have been insane. For this program, they are a true blue blood right now. You could call them a new blood if you want, but they are the prime example of what college basketball dominance looks like. UConn is just so freaking good, man. 75 to 60, they are back to back national champions taking down Purdue, which I know we're all just so sad to see. We're really, we're really sorry, Purdue. Yeah, we are. I know a lot of my listeners and my fans and watchers here of the show are are really upset about Purdue losing in the national championship game last night. But all all jokes aside, that was a really good Purdue team. And Zach Eady will go down as one of the most impactful players in the history of college basketball. But 
Just having a seven-footer is not enough. You've got to have good guard play, elite guard play, to win national championships. Indiana knows that on a smaller scale, right? We had a seven-footer. That was great. He's going to go play in the NBA. We had a power forward that's really good. That's coming back next year in Malik Renu. We had a freshman that got better and better and better as the season went on. But our guard play was horrific. It was terrible. And it's what led to our demise each and every time we went out on the, on the floor and played in a basketball game. And you saw Purdue go through that similar thing last night in the national championship game. Zach Eady did his thing. He had a ton of points, ton of rebounds, was dominant as ever. But Purdue's guards have no had no help. They had no, well, let me say it this way. Zach Eady had no help from his guards. That's a better way, right? They just weren't productive. And UConn took advantage of it and just pounced and jumped on them and really never let up. They were up by six at the half. They doubled that, more than doubled that by the end of the game. And UConn are back-to-back -back national champions. And now here we are. Now here we are as the season has come to a close. It's officially the offseason. They're saying Dan Hurley's staying in UConn. We'll see how they always say that. But we're in the offseason now. And what's important now for us in Indiana is it's time to focus up and get ready for next season because in college basketball, the offseason doesn't last very long. You just wrapped up the national championship game in the first week of April. The dead period's about to end this Thursday and open back up. So transfers and recruiting and all that's going to pick back up. You know it's a 365-day job in college sports now. But then you've got April, May, June, July, August, September, and then you start practicing October and the season starts November. Like you have basically six months of the offseason, and it's not even that much with all the, the recruiting and transfer stuff you got. So you could say there's about five months through the spring and the summer that you have to get ready for next season. And this Indiana program has got to get ready. This team has to get ready. And I know it's hard because we don't even know what that team's going to look like. We have no idea what this roster is going to hold when this team steps on the floor for the first time for the 2024-2025 season. And you know what? That's extremely scary. Not for us as you know, podcasters and listeners and fans, but think about the coaches, man. They're trying to plan for next season and have no idea who's on the roster. They have some, but they're also actively trying to go and get more, whoever the case may be, right? Not talking particular names here, just in general. You have to be ready and be prepared. And next season has to be better because this season for Indiana basketball was unacceptable. And we can all agree to that. And you know what? Mike Woodson told us that. He told us that in his own words. So he understands that it was not okay. And I guarantee that he knows this is the final straw. This is his last shot. He has to do something next season or he's going to be gone. And you know what? That's the right decision. This should be the final year for him because look at what's happening in other places. Look at what is happening with young and upcoming coaches around the game. The Hoosiers could go get a really big hire. There's some great coaches out there that I think the Hoosiers could go get if Mike Woodson doesn't work out. And I don't want to talk like we're already ready for him to be gone or preparing for him to be fired. But that's what I'm saying about next season. It has to go well. And you've got to make the tournament. You need to win a couple of games there, I think, for Mike Woodson to hang around here in Bloomington. Will that happen? I don't know. I expect it to be a crazy offseason here in Bloomington. I expect it to be a crazy offseason. It already is. The offseason wasn't even officially started, and the news is already flying off the chain. I think coaching changes are going to be happening like crazy. Transfer portal announcements are going to be happening like crazy. And I think a lot of that's going to be happening right here at in Indiana. And I hope that's the case. And you know it. if it is, we're going to be covering it. We'll be all over it here on Locked on Hoosiers. So that's why you need to be here. You can follow us on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. You can subscribe to the show on YouTube. Please do that. Takes one hit of the thumb. Also, like the show. Comment down below. I'm responding to comments on YouTube. So would love to engage with you guys as well. If you're on audio, hit the subscribe if you can, if it's an option on your audio platform. Turn on the notifications, hit the little bell. We post every single weekday. And big news on the weekend, we'll talk about that too. So be sure you're following us on the show. Happy Tuesday. Have a great day. Hey, 
We may have transfer portal news this week. Who knows? With the portal opening back up, the dead period will end this week. I think the floodgates are going to open. We'll see if the Hoosiers can take advantage of it. We'll be back tomorrow. So until then, Hoosier fans, stay safe, and I'll talk to you later.